Yesterday, Osborne turned up in Parliament and announced that he had made a few mistakes, that the cuts were having an effect but not a big enough effect. Never mind that unemployment's rising, that inequality's rising, that there's 20% of young people out of work. In some areas, it's 40% out of work. Never mind, we're heading deeply into a recession. So what's his solution? Hello? More cuts, more tax rises, more charge rises, more attacks on the social wage and the living standard of the poorest people in this country. This is a debate, a discussion, a war, if you like, about inequality in our society. These cuts are not fair, not equal, they are wholly disproportionate. They started with benefit cuts, they move on to wage freezes, they attack pensions, they close our services, they put, bring charges in wherever they can. It is all about destroying so much of what is so good within our society. You've seen what's happened in Greece. Unemployment through the roof. Un unemployed graduates, unemployed school leavers, unemployed factory workers. Services being slashed because Greece has been told that in order to borrow money it's got to pay minimum 8% on bonds. Some of the short-term bonds are much higher than that. Same thing in Spain, same thing in Portugal, same thing in Ireland, and now the same thing in Italy. Somebody is making a great deal of money out of loaning money to governments called bond dealers. Are we, as people who want to live in a civilized Europe, a civilized place with a welfare state, with a health service, with a benefit system, with support for young people, are we going to be held to ransom by the European Central Bank and the bankers of what we can or cannot do with our lives and our society. This is a, a dispute about pensions, yes, but it's also, in my view, a dispute about democracy and our lives and our living standards. They only have one card up their sleeve, one card, and that's disunity, divide and rule, private against public sector workers. It's such a nonsense, utter lies, utter lies. Ten years ago, sorry, 15 years ago, 8 million private sector workers had pensions. Today, it's 2 million. That's what they want to do with us. Somebody mentioned it. The real divide is class in society. They tell us that we're greedy. The multi-millionaires tell we are greedy. That's an outrage. £330,000 is the average the boardroom pensions are. Public sector, 7000 Notice the difference. Great disparity is divide and rule. And there's another divide and rule they do as well, and it's racism. When there's 1.2 million young people unemployed in this country, one in five, it's a national scandal that that is taking place. And who do the press blame? They try to blame the immigrants. There's that absolute rubbish and we know it's lies. The slogan from British jobs to British workers is a divisive one, and we should oppose it 100 to 100 percent. We stand united here tonight. It's black and white, men and women, gay and straight, we're united against these dividers. And finally, I'd like to say this. It's how we go forward, because I know in our union, this is not just a day of protest. This is not just about us letting off a bit of steam. Forget it. We're in this one to win. And that is why we will demand, if they don't come back to the negotiating table and tell us we won't take your pensions, then what we will be doing, we're going to strike and strike and strike again until we beat them down. That's what we've got to do. Solidarity. Now the government tells us we're all in this together. Well, if you want to reduce this deficit, why don't you tax the bankers' bonuses? Why don't you crack down on all those corporate tax dodgers? And why don't you support the fairest tax, the tax on the speculators, the Robin Hood tax? Support it now! And we are here in solidarity to protect our pension. 
this systematic approach attack on public sector workers has to stop. Enough is enough. We will not be bullied. We will not lie low and take away our pensions. We have to work more, we have to pay more, and we have to get less. What type of a deal is that? <laughs> Do you think this is a fair deal? I tell you it is a false deal. Yes, it is a false deal. Because it's young and old standing together. I can tell you, this is the biggest ever strike of women. There are so many women on this strike. It's fantastic. Right. We represent in the National Union of Teachers 308,000 people, but here's a different number. Sometimes 30 is not a very big number, but I can tell you when it's 30 public sector unions standing together in defence of pensions and in defence of services, that's a very big number. And we're really pleased all to be here today. You know, sisters and brothers, it makes me angry when I think of the Tory multimillionaires, these chinless wonders, these harbingers of greed, who have the cheek to attack public sector workers. You're the people that teach our kids, heal our sick, care for our vulnerable and our elderly, encourage our youth, clean our streets, collect our refuge. You are the people that create the very fabric of the civilised communities in which we live. How dare they attack you? Yeah. My message to the government is a straightforward one. Go sling your hook. Instead, instead of, instead of fighting, instead of attacking decent people, go and attack the spivs and the speculators, the corporate elite, the super rich, those that don't pay the taxes and cause this dispute and cause this crisis. I tell you this in finality, I want you to do one thing, believe, believe in your values, believe in your unions, believe in working class solidarity and justice will prevail. Good luck comrades. And you know, we need to make one final point. Nobody wants to be on strike. You all want to be providing the services that you take such pride in. But when you're being robbed of your pension, when you see your colleagues being sacked, when you see your pay being cut for another two years, there comes a point that we have to say, enough is enough. And our message has to be to Cameron, Clegg and Osborne. If you're not prepared to now get across the table, if you're not prepared to negotiate with us, then we are not going away and we will do it again if we have to. Okay, my name is Mark Campbell. I'm here representing 125,000 university and college lecturers. And I'm here to say the 99% are now off our knees and we won't go back down again. We are here to tell this government we will not work longer. We will not accept pay cuts. We will not accept the cuts of the 1%. We are here to stand up for all of the public services. We are here to say is enough is enough and the line is now in the sand. And if that means come January, come February, we will be out again in our millions and we will stay out until we win. We are not for compromising on our pensions. We are not for compromising on our public services. The only people who need to compromise are the bankers. They need to take the cuts for the mess they've made of our country. It's as simple as that. We have to take the strength of the day and we have to go out and fight and fight and fight until we win. We are not going to give up. This is from Tahira Square. They show us the way. We will fight until we win.
Oh, no. 